So let's practice some more in transforming our straight chain carbohydrate sugar molecules into their three dimensional cyclic counterparts. So starting with the straight chain version of d altrose which is shown in the diagram here, determine the three dimensional structure of beta D altropyranose in its chair conformation state, in the more stable chair conformation state. So let's begin by examining the d altrose molecules. So altro simply means we have one, two, three, four, five, six carbon atoms. On one end, the top end, we have the aldehyde group. On the bottom end, we have this primary alcohol. And our other carbons basically contain an H as well as a hydroxide attached to each of these four stereogenic carbons. So we have one, two, three, four carbons that are stereogenic. Carbon number one and carbon number six are not stereogenic. So basically, the D part of altrose, of D altrose, means that our hydroxyl group on the fifth carbon, on the, on the last stereogenic carbon, is found to the right. If we had the L altrose, it would be pointing to the left side, while the H would be pointing to our right side. So in the first step, we have an intramolecular nucleophilic reaction taking place in which this hydroxide, this oxygen, basically acts as the nucleophile attacking this carbon of our carbonyl group. Now, it can either attack it via the bottom or via the top. If we have a topside nucleophilic reaction, that will lead to the alpha d altropyranose. But if it attacks from the bottom, that will lead to the beta d altropyranose. So we're looking for the beta anomer, so we're going to undergo our bottom addition reaction. So we have our addition reaction taking place from the bottom portion. Now, once the bond between this oxygen on the fifth carbon and our first carbon is formed, we basically have the deprotonation of this oxygen taking place while this oxygen here is protonated. So after our deprotonation step, so let's say this is deprotonation, and then we have our protonation taking place. We basically form our molecule that looks something like this. So carbon number one will basically be here. Then we have carbon number two. So this is carbon number two. This is carbon number three. This is carbon number four. This is carbon number five. And this is our carbon number six. See, this is the primary. So. Um, so in the case of our, uh, the formation of the beta anomer, our OH that is formed will point in the opposite side of our oxygen here. So our OH will point in this direction, the H will be here. So this is, so let's label this as our carbon number one, carbon number two, three, four, five, and six. So we have our oxygen here that acts as our nucleophile. So we have our extended bond here and an extended bond here that we're going to draw in blue to basically give you some direction as to what is going on. So this bond created here in blue is shown here. This is carbon number one. And so if it attacks from the bottom, our oxygen that is then protonated will basically point to this side. So our oxygen here will point to this side while the H here will point to the other side. Now carbon number two contains this hydroxide that points this way. Carbon number three contains our H that points this way, the hydroxide points this way. Our fifth, car our actually fourth carbon also contains our OH pointing to the right, the H is pointing to the left, and then we have our H that is found here. Uh, on the fifth carbon here. 
Now, the question is, how exactly can we transform this two-dimensional diagram into the three-dimensional ring structure known as the Holworth form? That's what we want to do next. So basically, in the next step, so this is our beta anomer. And if this OH group pointed to this side towards this nucleophilic oxygen, this would be the alpha anomer. And that only takes place if this nucleophile attacks from the top side and not the bottom side. So next we take the bond between the fourth carbon and the fifth carbon and we rotate it so that this alcohol, primary alcohol, will basically rearrange and point this way while the H will point this way. So everything remains the same except the orientation of these two atoms basically changes in our rotation. So we have our H here, OH here, we have the OH here. And we have our CH2OH, the primary alcohol, and the H now moves down. And of course, we have this bond here that was formed initially as a result of that nucleophilic attack. Now, once the rotation takes place, we have this molecule that we can now basically flip and transform it into our Holworth form. This is basically a cyclic form, a three-dimensional cyclic form in which we have a planar structure. That is actually not exactly right. And that's exactly why we're going to need to transform it into the correct, more stable chair conformation in just a moment. So this is what the Holworth form basically looks like. So we flip it so that our oxygen is now here and our carbon number one is here. So this is carbon number one, carbon number two, which is carbon number two, carbon number three, carbon number three, four, five, four, five, this is six. And so that means because five is connected to six, we'll have a bond. And because this is going out, so this is going on top, our alcohol will also go on top. Uh, so that means the H goes on the bottom. So the H basically goes on the bottom. So let's go to carbon number four. This H goes onto the top. Our OH goes onto the bottom. Uh, carbon three is the OH goes onto the bottom while the H goes onto the top. The two, the OH goes onto um, the top, the H goes onto the bottom. And on carbon number one, the OH goes onto the top and the H goes onto the bottom. And so this is in fact the beta anomer because the OH points in the same direction as this alcohol group here. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this is not exactly the most accurate picture of what the molecule actually looks like because this describes the ring being planar. But the ring isn't actually planar. It's actually in the chair conformation. And there are two chair conformations. We only want to worry about the more stable chair conformation. So let's create this more stable chair conformation. So basically, the more stable chair conformation is the chair conformation that contains more, uh, uh, more of the larger groups found on the equatorial side of the molecule. And the way that we're going to create this more stable chair conformation is basically by taking carbon number four, raising it up, and taking carbon number one and raising it down. So we basically take this carbon, pull it down, pull this up, and we create that chair conformation. So it's going to look something like this. So we have our oxygen that will be found here, and we're going to have our, sorry, wrong chair conformation. Okay, and then we're going to have our blue bond here and the other bond will be something like this. So we have this and we have this. Okay, 
So carbon number one that has been pulled down is the carbon here. This is carbon number two, carbon number three, carbon number four has been pulled up. This is carbon number five and carbon number six is our group that will be pointing equatorially. So now let's actually determine which group points where. So basically the group that points up is the group that also points up in that position. So let's begin with carbon number one. On carbon number one, the equatorial direction points upward, the axile points downward. So this points upward, so our OH will be pointing equatorially while our H will be pointing along the axial direction. On carbon number two, the OH also points upward, but on this one, it's the axial that points upward and the equatorial that will point downward. So here the OH points along the axial. Now, what about carbon number three? We have the OH pointing downward, and so now here our OH must also point downward. So here the axile points downward, while our equatorial points, or our equatorial points upward. So that means our OH should point downward along the axile direction. Now on carbon number four, the OH points downward and here the axile points upward, equatorial points downward. So that means our OH will point along the equatorial while our H will point along our axile. Here our H will point along the axile. And finally, on position number five. So this is carbon number five, this is carbon number six. Now on position number five, our primary alcohol points upward and here the exile points downward while equatorial will point upward. Uh, so that means our alcohol points along the equatorial, our H will point along our axile. So notice we have one group two group, three groups are pointing along the more stable equatorial direction and only one, two groups will point along the less stable axile. Now when this undergoes a flip to create the other chair conformation, all these positions basically uh, reverse themselves. So on the other chair conformation we have three of them pointing along the axile and two pointing along the equatorial. So that means this will be the more stable chair conformation for our beta D altro pyranose. The pyranose means we have a six member ring. Altro means we, we have um, these six carbons. Uh, arranged in the following stereochemistry, the beta means that this OH points in the same direction as this primary alcohol group here. So we have our flip taking place to create the less stable chair conformation and actually let's go ahead and draw that molecule as well. So basically what we do now is we take this carbon four, we pull it down, we take this carbon one, we pull it up, and basically everything reverses orientation. So let's go ahead and draw the next one. So we have our molecule that basically looks something like this. We have our oxygen here, and the oxygen, we have our bond here, 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 and Let's draw the blue one because we're looking at this bond, blue bond here that has now been pulled up. So all of these H's and OH's and our alcohol, primary alcohol, basically reverse direction. So let's label our carbon, carbon number one, two, carbon number three, carbon number four, carbon number five, and then carbon number six would be the carbon attached to the fifth carbon. So let's begin with carbon number one. On carbon number one, this was equatorial. Now it will be axile or actually, yeah, axile. So on this position, we have our OH that will point along the axile. So our H will be along our equatorial. Now the second carbon contains our OH on the axile. So now it will be along the equatorial while our H will be along the axile. Carbon number three contains the OH points along our axile. So now it points along our equatorial. So it points downward. The H will basically point upward. 
On carbon number four, we have our OH that points along the equatorial. Now it points along our XL, so basically points uh, downward like so, and our H points along our exile and the fifth one this primary it points along the equatorial but now it points along our exile so it basically points upward as shown while our h will point along the equatorial so notice in the le uh, in the last stable chair confirmation we basically have one pointing along the exile we have this pointing along the exile as well as one more that should point along the exile which is this one versus two of them are only pointing along the equatorial so this is our less stable chair confirmation this is the more stable chair confirmation and this will exist it will this will predominate at equilibrium